Well guys, what do you know, this is another video where we're just gonna read tweets. I gave myself all of the passes in the previous video saying that this kind of thing doesn't really take all too much skill to do, but everybody in the comments was like, you know what, it's good that you're doing this because all of the information is in one place. So, that's exactly what we're doing here today. But, because this is a Vancouver Canucks news update, we have ourselves some updates with the team, the free agents, the restricted free agents, the guys who are already on the squad, but the big stories, the ones that captivate the most people, are the ones that we're saving till the very end. We also put these in the title and the thumbnail because, hey, you know, you market your material based off of the most marketable parts of it. So, let's go over onto Twitter and search up a few tweets posted by a few different accounts. We're mostly going off of what Taj said here. Now, Taj, if you know who Taj is, he's a guy, he listens to TSN radio, he listens to Sportsnet radio, 650 and 1040. And what he does is he usually just tweets about what's said on air, and it's very useful for people like me because I can screenshot these tweets and put them on the screen so you can follow along and actually get up to speed with what's happening with visual references. So, let's go in chronological order over here. We had ourselves the first tweet from Taj talking about what Elliot Friedman said on the Fan 960 Sportsnet version in Calgary. He said this, that the Canucks will take a run at signing all three of Markstrom, Tanev, and Toffoli. Then, they'll make other roster decisions based on what happens with those three. So pretty much, just the very first interesting part of this is that Markstrom, Toffoli, Tanev, the guys who we were all talking about on this YouTube channel as the big three, you'd have to choose two and leave one out, or maybe even only sign one, Nah, man, the Vancouver Canucks look like they want to sign all three and then determine what happens with Mott, McEwen, Stetcher, Vertanen, Gaudette afterwards. You can say what you want about how good that is in terms of your asset management, but let's continue. Another tweet over here was from what Irfan Gaffar said on Sportsnet 650. He mentioned how the Canucks believe they can sign all three, so not only is that the plan to sign all three, they, according to sources, legitimately feel like they can. This is the whole we can and we will kind of thing, except it's just not public, it's being leaked out through guys in the media. Next up though, another tweet over here from Taj goes over what he personally believes, just the way that everybody is talking on the radio. It sure seems like it's going to be Tanev or Stetcher based on everything coming out. This refers to the log jam on the right side, Rafferty Myers. These are two guys that are already there. But Stetcher and Tanev are the other two guys who the Canucks have that may be able to fill that last spot. But one's a UFA, one's an RFA. We already spoke about the other idea that the Canucks are going to try to sign Tanev, but whatever happens with him will dictate what happens with all the other guys. So just from that narrative alone, it appears that Troy Stetcher may be on his way out. He does need a contract, but he is a hometown Richmond guy, so I know a lot of Canucks fans would not want to part with this guy, myself included. But let's continue. The next tweet we have over here is from Sportsnet 650's Twitter account. They're quoting what Irfan Gaffar said. He says this, The Canucks have made it a priority that they want to get these two guys in, Toffoli and Markstrom. Toffoli has expressed interest in being in Vancouver and playing with Elias Pettersson. And Pettersson has talked to Benning about having Toffoli in the room. 4.8 for four years could get it done, and man, okay, 4.8, that's a number right there. That's something that we haven't had too much in these discussions, a number. Tyler Toffoli was making $4.6 million over the past few years, and he was a guy who honestly wasn't really all too great in that contract that he signed. I will say that Tyler Toffoli's better days were when he was winning Stanley Cups as a younger 20-year-old guy with the LA Kings. So... In my opinion, a minimum of a $200,000 increase does seem a little bit fishy. I don't know if I would really get that in there and absorb it the way that the Los Angeles Kings did before. 
especially considering his performance. But devil's advocate to that point of view, Tyler Toffoli was literally a point per game when he was here in Vancouver in the regular season. You can say what you want about the playoffs, but the guy had 10 points in 10 games played. So there certainly is a debate that could say that this guy could demand that amount of money. But if it is 4.8, then hey, there's going to be a lot of other stuff that's going to have to happen with this Canucks team. Because right now, as I'm recording this video, the Canucks have a projected $14 million in cap space. So that's $10 million left to work with, with Marky, Tanev, Stetcher, Gaudet, Vertan, and you know what I'm talking about here. It's a lot. Irfan Gafar also said that he does not believe that Markstrom and the Canucks are too far off in terms of the money. It's about a no trade, no move clause, and this is going to kill the Canucks, because if Jacob Markstrom gets a no trade or a no move, then Demko is going to Seattle, because once you have one of these things attached to your contract, you are automatically protected in the expansion draft. That's just how it goes. And the Vancouver Canucks are only going to be allowed to protect one goalie. And if that goalie is Jacob Markstrom by default because he's not allowed to be moved, sayonara Demko, you're out. The best case scenario in my opinion would be to sign Markstrom to a contract that does not have a no trade. So you can trade this guy at the deadline, get some assets back, so he doesn't leave for free. And then you roll with Demko going into the expansion draft and the remainder of his career in Vancouver. But of course, not everything works out like it's GM mode, doesn't it? Next up, another tweet. This is from Rick Dollywall over on TSN 1040. This is what Rich Evans says on Tyler Mott. I think both sides are interested in getting a deal done with term. We'll talk with the Canucks, so we will see if Tyler Mott is able to lock himself in and stay for an extended amount of time here in Vancouver. I know I personally would really like to see Mott back. He's a very good bottom six guy, but it's still yet to be determined. We also have Jordy Ben. He says that Jordy would like to be back in Vancouver, but that's something that could be determined over the course of the offseason. This is because we already heard it from Benning, Yolevi, Chatfield, some of these guys may be ready to be NHL guys. And Jordy Ben is a player on the Canucks blue line who's legitimately making $2 million for next season. That money is significant, so maybe the Canucks could be exploring a trade. Who really knows? But word has it that Jordy Ben would like to come back. Back over to Taj, this is what Rick Dollywell said on TSN. I think by the end of the week, the Vancouver Canucks would have a pretty good indicator of which UFAs will be coming back. So, it's Monday as I'm recording this video. It'll be Tuesday when we upload it. By the end of this week, give it five days at maximum, we will probably be knowing who's staying and who's on their way out. Next up on Taj, though, this is the crazy part of the video, man. Rick Dollywall said this on TSN 1040. Don't go crazy here, but I heard Wayne Simmons' name again the other day in regards to the Vancouver Canucks, and this tweet kind of blew up. It was the one that everybody looked at, and they were like, okay, really? We're still on this? Wayne Simmons is a power forward. His best days are behind him. This has all the makings of another Louis Erickson-like situation, but... If you want to hear me talk about Wayne Simmons more, check out the video we made about him on the Leafs. Also, we have a lot of other videos on this channel too. Just search up Simmons Canucks Lego Rocks 99 and you'll see a lot showing up there. But we have a few other little tidbits as well. This is what Taj wrote about Dollywall. Pittsburgh is a team I keep hearing about that would have a lot of interest in Chris Tanev. And to me, that's not a surprise. Brandon Tanev is a guy who got paid in Pittsburgh as a very nice middle six, bottom six forward. Chris Tanev, the right side demon who could come in and replace Jack Johnson if you guys decide to move him or buy him out. That would be a very interesting idea for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And honestly, having two Tanevs on the same team would not be all too bad, if I do say so myself. I love the way Tanev is able to play the game. Obviously, as a Canucks fan, I've seen this guy grow up here in Vancouver, so it would sting to watch him leave. But if Pittsburgh is a team that has interest in him, then I would rather him go to Pittsburgh than probably any other team. I probably wouldn't want to subject him to the pain that is playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs, so I don't really want to think about that a little bit. I'm joking, of course, but going forward with the other rumor we have here, this is what Irfan Gafar said on Sportsnet. He has heard that the Avalanche and the Flames are interested in Jacob Markstrom. And my first instinct was, of course they are. We've seen goaltending rumors out of all these teams over here. The Avalanche with Francus and Grubauer looking for Matt Murray. We talked about the Calgary Flames, Cam Talbot, David Riddick, all these guys over here. 
These teams are the teams amongst other teams like Edmonton, like Toronto, that people are saying could be looking for goaltenders. And if Jacob Markstrom is available, hey man, he's one of the best on the market. Believe me. So it does not surprise me that Calgary or Colorado would be involved in wanting a Jacob Markstrom. It's just weird to actually have it labeled out there in the media that apparently it is so. So that is our video here today. My goodness, it's another one of these reading tweet videos, but... <sighs> Lots of stuff, eh? Lots of stuff. Wait until the end of the week, because at the end of the week, this is probably where we're going to actually have concrete information as to who's staying and exactly what the plan is going forward. So we'll talk about this a little bit more as the week goes on. But for now, comment down in the comments below what you think about the Canucks wanting to re-sign all three of their big three free agents, maybe being interested in Wayne Simmons, and the idea of Tanev going to Pittsburgh and Markstrom garnering interest from Calgary and Colorado. Let me know about all that stuff, as well as the Tyler Toffoli contract numbers as well, in the comments section below. I'm looking forward to reading all your comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>